So I told you at the beginning of the semester that there's like six different reasons why, because um, nobody knows why Hamlet doesn't kill Claudius. It's, it's like one of the most famous mysteries in all of literature. And I told you there are about six different reasons that people have come up with. One of them is that Hamlet doesn't like violence. He's essentially a nonviolent person who is being pressured into violence, and it's really not for him. Another is that he doesn't kill Claudius because it's just a bad idea practically. Like, if you kill Claudius, you're going to get killed by the guards, so how's that going to work? So Hamlet pretends to be crazy until the moment is right, and the moment is sort of right when he does it, because Claudius, you know, the poisoning, he's poisoned his wife, and, you know, everybody knows that, and Laertes says, he poisoned, you know, uh, he poisoned the swords, he poisoned the cup. Um, so that's explanation number two. Explanation number three is Hamlet is too sensitive. He's got too many emotions. It's really not his thing to kill people. Um, the other one is he thinks too much. He just keeps thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and he can't act. Um, he can't actually do the thing. Um, Nietzsche says that Hamlet's problem is that he has gained knowledge um, and knowledge inhibits action because Hamlet thinks it to be, he thinks it's ridiculous or humiliating to be asked, set, to, to, be asked to, to set right a world that is out of joint. Um, that Nietzsche's idea is that Hamlet understands that in the cosmic scheme of things, all of this is garbage. Um, and so there's no reason he doesn't, he just doesn't see the point. He's sort of, he's manic depressive, right? He just doesn't like, what's even the fucking point of killing Claudius? Um, he suffers from some manic depressive swings. And so he often is just like, what is even the point of killing Claudius? Who gives a shit? But Freud's answer is kind of the final answer. Um, the last one I'm going to go over. And Freud, Freud's idea is that Hamlet, remember Freud said that the audience, that it's the idea that people, that, that he says that kids want to kill their dads and fuck their moms. But the society teaches you that's gross and repulsive, and so you push it down into your subconscious. But then when you see it in a play, you're like, oh, shit. Like, that is kind of under, like what my lizard brain wants to do, what my unconscious wants to do. Um, so that what, what happens with Freud's explanation is that Hamlet, like everybody, wants to kill his dad and fuck his mom, um, but that he represses this knowledge. When the ghost shows up, and says, kill your dad. When he sees that his mother is relatively easy to get in bed because the next guy just gets her. Um, and when he starts, maybe Hamlet is suspecting that Claudius is his real biological father. Um, because who knows how long it, this affair has been going on for. Um, I mean, did they just get together as soon as King Hamlet died? Were they fucking before King Hamlet died? How much before? Decades before? If Claudius is his real dad, and he's seeing that his mother is pretty easy to get in bed after his after the dad dies. He is Freud says he's being confronted with the fundamental repressed thing, which is the desire to kill your dad and fuck your mom. Um, and that's why he goes crazy and can't act because he both wants these. He both wants to kill his dad and fuck his mom. And also the whole idea is completely repulsive and gross. Uh, and that explains all of his crazy psychology. And that's Freud's theory. Um, and also Freud's theory would be that we in the audience, because again, this is the art and audience unit, what Hamlet is, is experiencing, which is he finds this fascinating, and the idea of killing your dad and fucking your mom, he finds it fascinating, but also repulsive. We in the audience find it fascinating and repulsive. And that's why we want to watch the play over and over again, because we're both fascinating we're fascinated by it and repulsed by it. But it's also okay to be repulsed because it's not real, right? If they poison but in jest, um, it's fake. Um, so this is the idea. Now, the mo one of the most interesting moments this semester, I'm really sad I don't have you in the room for this, and I'm really sad if you don't click the watch the video I'm going to put below this. But um, in 1948, Lawrence Olivier, it's one of the most famous actors. I actually kind of fucking hate Lawrence Olivier. I think he's a terrible actor, but people love him. He was like a big deal. I can't stand him. Um, but Laurence Olivier um, directed a version of Hamlet in 1948. And Laurence Olivier had been reading Sigmund Freud. And Laurence Olivier agreed with Sigmund Freud's theories. And so he, I'm going to show you the scene we just went over in detail. If you click the video below, you can watch it. Um, it's a 10 minute video of exactly the scene we just went over. Now, for starters and for funsies, let's start with this. Laurence Olivier plays Hamlet. Laurence Olivier is 41 years old. He's got an actress playing Gertrude, his mother. The woman he chose, because he also directed the movie, the woman he chose to play his mother is 26. He's 41, and he picks a 26-year-old to be his mom. And in the scene, you, when you watch the scene below, it's fucking hilarious. They're in the bedroom. He's yelling at her about her sex life. But when you see the shots, it looks like they're about to make out. And in fact, they do share one long, disturbing kiss. 
Um, it's supposed to be kind of a goodbye kiss, but like it's it's it really seems like a romantic kiss. But you can see also he's kind of repulsed by the idea, um, but he kind of also wants to. Um, and so this is this this is in one of the most famous movie versions of Hamlet is this idea that he wants to uh, fuck his fuck his mom and kill his dad. Um, there's also a choice in the scene that I hate. I think it's a terrible moment. Um, when the ghost shows up, Laurence Olivier, they don't show the ghost because they don't really have the special effects. So what they do is they make the camera the ghost. So he's like yelling at the camera because they don't want to show the ghost. They just kind of want to, the camera is the ghost. It's cheaper. Um, Laurence Olivier, as an actor, makes a decision. It's kind of stupid, but I get it. He He's on his belly, crawling on the floor, being, oh, ghost, ghost, ghost. It's It looks fucking stupid. Um, but here's the thing. The reason Laurence Olivier is doing it is because he's in his parents' bedroom, and so he starts acting like an infant who can't walk. He's crawling on his belly like an infant child, because again, that's the kind of age that Freud would say, you want to kill your dad and fuck your mom. And so he's essentially regressed to some kind of fucked up childhood scene that he can't get out of. Um, Anyway, it's an amazing movie scene, and I love watching it with students because it's an old movie, but it's also bonkers, and students gasp, and it's crazy. But it's very entertaining to watch. What, what's interesting to me is that Sigmund Freud, we've looked at a lot of theorists in this class, and Baudrillard was name-checked in uh, The Matrix, which is kind of cool. But most of the theorists we look at in this class don't show up in movies. But here you have a, a, a big movie version of Hamlet where Laurence Olivier read Freud and was like, oh shit, Freud's right. I'm going to do my movie exactly like this. And then he did. Um, and holy shit, it is like watching Sigmund Freud on a fucking movie screen. So um, really, please try to enjoy the uh, the craziness. He puts his head in her lap like a baby. It's just, oh my God, it's so much. The scene is so crazy. It's not really a good movie, and I hate Lawrence Olivia, but it's a fascinating train wreck of a thing. Um, okay, and I'm going to let you guys watch that. So that is the end of our art and audience section. So good job. You have made it to kind of the end. I'm going to have one more philosopher for you and we'll go over. And I also have a fun little movie that I made that I'm going to show you guys. And uh, yeah, awesome. I think that's it. Thanks for joining me. And I'll, uh, we'll do one more philosopher to close the semester. And then I'll have some kind of closing say goodbye videos. And uh, yeah, okay. Walter Pater next time. Uh, cool.